Today on Monkey Life, Alison's in the Lebanon to rescue two rare endangered Gwenon monkeys. Hey, Mrs. Benny and Nia. Oh, there's the little boy. But when she gets the pair back to London, things don't go to plan. Really sad, actually. The ministry vet isn't going to clear them tonight. And back at the park, there's a wobbly treat for the bachelor chimps. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Hello, missus. Hi, you. Are you a good girl? The park provides a home for more than 250 monkeys and apes from 21 different species. Lebanon, sitting at the crossroads of the Mediterranean basin, neighboring Syria and Israel, has, like many countries, suffered from illegal wildlife smuggling. But the authorities there have started to crack down on the trade. And as a result, Alison has flown in to rescue two rare and endangered monkeys, white-throated guenons. The Lebanese authorities at Beirut airport confiscated the pair who were illegally smuggled from Benin on a flight from Ghana. A charitable organization called Animals Lebanon, set up 10 years ago to improve the welfare of animals in the region, was asked to look after them until a suitable home could be found. Now, Alison has arrived to take the duo back to a new life at Monkey World. Hi, hey, Alison. Jason, how, how are you are going? You? Good seeing you yeah, again. Good to see you. Welcome. What an amazing office. Good, thank you. Jason Myers has worked for Animals Lebanon since the charity began and has been caring for the two Gwenons at home since they were confiscated. It'll be good for the monkeys, it'll be good for us, it'll be good for, for everybody really to be done with this situation to get them on to the next phase of their life. So we have 24 hours to get everything done though, so it's time to get started and we'll, we'll be able to get it going. So you're gonna have a lot of them In 2013, the Lebanese government signed up to CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. And with the help of Animals Lebanon, they've been working hard to stop the illegal trade of protected species moving through the country. We've okay. had some lions and leopards and tiger cubs. Oh, Only last month, the authorities confiscated a loris from a local pet shop. It was being advertised on social media for $2,000, along with two other infants who most likely didn't survive. Crazy, CITES Appendix 1 species, so they really had no idea what they were doing. So, uh, here's Mr. Loris. So, we got him about a... <laughs> Mr. Uh, Loris, I love it. About a month ago. We're gonna have to work on a name. Yes, I'm not very good. I think I've run out of names. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think he's sleeping now in this little white yeah, basket. Of seems is. to be his favorite. Okay. So I, I think that was Loris are under threat from loss of habitat, traditional medicine and the illegal pet trade. The future of this little loris depends on an upcoming court case. It's hoped it'll eventually be able to join others of its kind at Monkey World's new loris complex. At the moment, he or she is fast asleep in this basket. They are, after all, nocturnal. Yep, seven o'clock, he'll wake up, we'll be back. All right, we'll set our clocks, fantastic. Unlike Monkey World, Animals Lebanon isn't equipped to house and look after every species they rescue. So the Gwenons are living in two cages at Jason's flat. It's a short journey from the office, and Alison is excited to see the Gwenons. The park has never housed this particular species, and white-throated Gwenons are in fact so rare, very little is known about them in the wild or captivity. Oh, wow. Hey, you guys. The pair have already been named. Benny, a male, is thought to be the younger of the two, and the other is a female, Nia. Hey, Mrs. Benny and Nia. Oh, there's the little boy. 
They're not always together. No, not always together. He gets scared of her, but we've never seen her do anything to him. I think it's that he is younger and has spent less time in captivity. Alison is keen to learn as much information as possible from Jason about the Gwenon's diet and individual habits. Anything that they particularly dislike? No, because almost everything we've given they've eaten at some point. It's just amazing to finally be here and actually seeing Benny and Nia. I've had so many photographs and video clips from Jason, so really good and really pleased to see them. So I'm just rolling everything around in my head because this is going to be a quick turnaround. How do we get them into the boxes? Can they walk, will they walk into the boxes willingly? I reckon she might because she's nosy and pushy in the finest female tradition and that he's a little bit more jittery and cautious, so um, he might need a helping hand into the box. To give the pair some natural daylight and extra stimulation, Jason puts them out on the balcony every day. In general, they, they seem quite content with the situation, that they eat well, they're, they're really quite happy. We haven't had any problems. They, they seem interested in what's going on around them. So they have a view of trees, but that's not good enough, especially knowing that they must have came from the wild and that they probably haven't been in captivity too long since we got them. So it's good to get them on their way and get them out of here and into a better place, certainly. Benny and Nia have already been health checked on behalf of Monkey World by wildlife vet John Lewis, who flew out a few weeks ago. Thankfully, he gave them the all clear. Benny and Nia will need to spend one more night in the cages that have been their home for the last few months. When Alison and Jason return to the office in the evening, the tiny Loris is up and about. There's a bug. Look. No one is sure of the primate's sex just yet, but Alison took a close look, being careful to avoid the Loris's toxic bite. I think it's a little girl. Um, not 100% on that. She's clearly a juvenile and not a pygmy loris, but a Bengal slow loris, I believe. But, um, she's looking fantastic. She's got a good attitude and clearly a good appetite. We'll have to wait and see, but really pleased, really exciting. Sweet as can be. Really nice. Don't do that. So far, everything is going to plan. But tomorrow may be a challenging day for Alison and the two Gwenons. Hopefully, if all goes well, in the not too distant future, the Loris will be able to join them and start a new life at the park too. More than 2,000 miles away, the team at Monkey World are busy preparing for the imminent arrival of Benny and Nia. For the last few months, the maintenance staff have been busy transforming an old, unused enclosure into a purpose-built house, ready to welcome this brand new species to the park. Everybody here is really excited to meet the new arrivals, see what they're like. Um, also, obviously, it's a little bit daunting. It is a new species here. Um, we don't really know an awful lot about them. So, you know, working out what's best for them, kind of when we're decking out the enclosures and making sure that we've got everything that they'll need for their health and to make them comfortable. But I think we're all on track um, and pretty much set to go. Most species of Gwenon are arboreal, meaning they live and move in trees. So the team have decked out the enclosure with lots of high ropes, cargo nets and platforms for them to climb on, as well as using the existing natural planting. Obviously, we'll take it very slowly. They might be really nervous of the whole situation. It's a big deal for them, you know. They've done a big, long journey and they've kind of gone from place to place so far. So they might be very nervous, very jumpy, very wary of individuals as well. So we'll take it all very slowly, very cautiously, and we'll just play it by ear and obviously do as much as we can to make them settle in as quickly and as smoothly as we can. One option being discussed is to move Patus monkey Mitsa and ring-tailed lemur George, known as the odd couple, over to join the new arrivals. The three species wouldn't overlap in the wild, but putting them together might make them more active. 
But for now, the staff must put the finishing touches to the enclosure, ready for Benny and Nia's arrival in the early hours of tomorrow morning. It's early morning in Lebanon, and today is a big day for Alison and the two rare white-throated Gwenons, Benny and Nia. She's here to collect the pair and take them back to a new life at Monkey World. They were confiscated several months ago, but the paperwork and legalities meant they couldn't be moved straight away, and they've been looked after by Jason Myers from Animals Lebanon, a charitable organization working in the region. Jason has been in close contact with the authorities at Beirut Airport in order to organize a smooth and safe transit back to the UK for the pair. But right at the last minute, there seems to be a hitch. So who does he need from customs to say it's done? There's been some miscommunication between different departments, so one department is not prepared for the Gwenon's imminent arrival. So it's now one o'clock, the flight leaves a little bit after five, so we still got time, it'll work out. Benny and Nia, however, are completely oblivious to the potential holdup. This is it. We're just about to get the guys boxed up. There's been a little bit of a paperwork drama at the airport, but that's nothing new. Um, I've actually given them breakfast this morning, so I've been getting to know Benny and Nia a bit better. And I'm hopeful that everything's going to go smoothly. They got a bit of food in their belly, and it's always the really like difficult time for me. I get all stressed and my stomach's doing flip-flops. If I could just explain to them that the airport's going to be a li little bit loud and scary, but in the end, we're going to get you back to the park and it's going to be OK. But um, I think it's time to move. But before that, the two monkeys need to be transferred from their cages into the travel boxes. Some pieces of fruit might tempt them in and make the whole process less stressful. Are you seeing what's going in there? It looks really good. Benny will go first. He's thought to be the younger of the two and a little more nervous. Come on, little man. He's wary of the box and can't quite summon up the courage to go in. Come on, buddy. He's going to need some gentle persuasion. Could give it one more go. I don't want to know. A bit of encouragement, and he's in. Next up is Nia, the female, who looks older than Benny and is a lot more confident, although she's now on her guard. Yeah, she knows what you're doing. She's not dumb. There you go. But it doesn't take long for Nia to enter the travel box. With the Gwenons safely boxed and all travel documents ready, the team can now head off to Beirut Airport. Alison is happy with how the Gwenons are coping. I'm really pleased. We just have to hope that everything goes smoothly now at cargo. We need to get them strapped to a pallet and then up into the plane, and then our job here for now is done until we start again at Heathrow. When they arrive at the airport, the two monkeys are weighed and customs officials check all the paperwork. Thankfully, everything now seems to be in order. All right, we put them here. We're done weighing, let's put them here, guys. But Alison and Jason are determined. Once Benny and Nia have passed through customs, they're not left on the tarmac under a hot sun waiting to be loaded. They want someone with the monkeys at all times. Thank you so much. The airport officials agree. Everybody's well aware that they need to be looked after carefully, so they should be OK. Alison is allowed onto the tarmac to check the Gwenons one more time before they're loaded into the cargo hold of the plane. Yep. She's happy. Considering all the noise around them, Benny and Nia seem fairly relaxed. That's them just being loaded into the plane, which is fantastic. I can see that they're in the front hold. That's going to be heated to 20, 21 degrees by the captain. We'll make sure that that happens, and they should have a smooth flight back to UK. It should go quiet soon for them, which is nice. Alison keeps watch until the last possible moment. All she can do now is hope the Gwenons will cope well with the journey.
With such a diverse mix of primates at Monkey World, the care teams do their best to come up with stimulating and creative ways to keep them occupied and engaged. Nice and wibbly wobbly though, aren't they? <laughs> at the bachelor's chimp enclosure, the 14 boys are in for a bit of a weird and wobbly treat. Huge trays of jelly. Right, OK, ready? One, two, three. It's just a bit of fun for them, really. They don't get things like this very often. Um, so we've got it, the different flavoured fruit jellies uh, with no added sugar, so we don't want them all having a sugar rush. Um, and in them, we've put things like sunflower seeds, so there's, there's bits for them to sort of pick out and, and nibble on as well. When we weighed them out, there's like 14 litres of jelly in each of these, so it's quite heavy to try and lift them up, and they're very wobbly. So, yeah, I'm a bit covered in it at the moment, but hopefully they're all going to... You can hear they're all very excited because they've spotted us putting them out, so hopefully we'll get a good reaction when they actually come out to um, uh, experience their little jelly trays. To give some of the low-ranking chimps the chance to grab their share, the team are placing the jelly trays all around the enclosure. They hope high-rankers like Paco, Butch, Buxom and Jester won't hoard all the trays to themselves. We're also going to throw some food out from the towers just to make sure that there is something for everyone. Um, but yeah, we, we, I am sure we will see the big lads firing out first. <laughs> um, but um, that's that's how chimp life goes. The, the dominant males get the pick of the pick of the crop, so um, that's as we would expect. But we do as much as we possibly can to make sure that the lower ranking individuals do get some as well. So, fingers crossed, we should uh, get a good reaction when we actually let them out. <laughs> and here they come. As expected, it's the dominant males who head immediately for the trays of jelly. Paco makes full use of his dexterous hands to scoop up as much of the wobbly treat as he can. And old-timer Butch joins another high ranker, Buxom, as they tuck amicably into the jelly. Low ranker Seamus, the youngest in the group, is savouring every mouthful. While Charlie isn't sure what to make of it all. And is waiting until the high rankers have had their fill. Perhaps he should follow Paquito's approach. He asks for reassurance from Mojo, who readily gives it. Before Gypsy arrives throwing his weight around. Mojo isn't having any of it, straight away telling Gypsy off. They will have a, the odd sort of boys tussle, and but it's, a, it's what you would expect. Sometimes they're having fun, sometimes it's the big boys maybe pushing their, their, their dominance onto the lower ones, but it's all part of life as a chimpanzee. In the wild, chimpanzee troops are made up of a core group of males, with females who tend to come and go. The males often forge strong alliances that can last a lifetime. That's one of the reasons why the bachelor group tends to work so well. Do get very strong social bonds between the males because they basically play politics and they'll spend time grooming each other um, and backing each other up. And that's how they, they raise their ranks in the group. The more individuals you can get on your side, the more likely you are to climb the, the, the hierarchy. Um, so, with the bachelors, you do see quite a lot of the time uh, people, they'll spend time grooming each other and that's their way of sort of ensuring that they increase their status within the social ladder. As the morning draws to a close, some of the low rankers get their chance to tuck in. Kiko is certainly making the most of it, while Freddy uses the hands-free approach. It's great to see that in such a large all-male group with a strict hierarchy, no one has missed out. And they're not leaving anything either, even scooping the leftovers off the grass. It's early evening at London Heathrow's Animal Reception Centre. Every year, hundreds of thousands of animals pass through here when they arrive on flights from abroad. Tonight, it's the turn of Benny and Nia, two white-throated Gwenons who've just arrived on a flight from Beirut. The centre employs many people, 
including vets and care staff, to look after the welfare of the animals. But the arrival of the two Gwenons is probably a first for everyone. Just done a quick visual check just to make sure this they've made the journey okay. They're just waiting on the veterinary paperwork now. They need to clear customs and then they'll be making their journey off to Monkey World. Alison has made the short journey from the terminal to the reception centre. She's anxious to check on Benny and Nia following the flight. But there's already a problem. A vet from DEFRA wants to remove them from their boxes to check their microchips. There's no way you can open those boxes. OK. Not going to happen. They will be out. They are very lively. You will never catch them again. It took mm -hmm. us quite a while to box them up. He gives it a try with the two monkeys still in their travel boxes, but Benny and Nia are quick movers and a bit skittish after such a long journey and won't stay still. Their microchips will have to be read at the park when they're more settled and the information passed on to DEFRA. Yeah, I think we're just waiting for the paperwork to be finalised now and then we should be on our way. But it's not that easy. There's a problem. The vet has an issue with some of the paperwork. Ministry vet isn't going to clear them tonight, so they're going to have to stay here and stay in their boxes overnight, which is a real shame. We had hoped to get them down to the park. But um, because the health certificate was in French, Benny and Nia will have to stay at the reception centre overnight in their travel boxes, looked after by the staff there. The paperwork is being referred to head office, which won't be open until the morning. For now, after a long trip, Alison must head back to the park empty-handed. Next time on Monkey Life, Chimp Freddy has an uncomfortable problem. Stitch, please. But can a human medical specialist get to the bottom of it? If these blue areas are the areas that he's bleeding from, they are, in effect, hemorrhoids. And a new baby for woolly mum Zingu.